Happy Saturday, New York Comic Con. I don't know, I have some people up here you might recognize. Are there any Outlanders in the room? Oh, yeah. Guys, these, they, you know exactly who these people are. They are the core four of Outlanders. Sam Ewan. Hello. Katrina Balfe. Hi. Sophie Skelton. Hey. And Richard Rankin. Hello. These wow. are the Frasers of Fraser Ridge, where we're going for season four of Outlander. Hello, guys. Hey. Hello. Thank you for having Hi, us. You guys everybody. look amazing. So we are 29 days away from getting our Droughtlander appeased because season four comes back on November 4th on Stars. It must feel like a million years since you actually shot this season, right? Because you guys are prepping for season five soon. Um, yeah. So look, going back into history, you guys got to stay in Scotland, but you guys are shooting Scotland as colonial America, pre-colonial America. So tell me a little bit about what it was like to come back to familiar, but then basically changing up all of your environments to be a new continent. Well, I think one of the coolest things, I mean, traditionally we've used so many of the like castles and old stately homes and stuff of Scotland, but obviously, you know, colonial America is very different. So we, they built uh, a town in this like X, I don't know, what is it? An X quarry, uh, quarry or something? Yeah, yeah. But it, it, it had that incredible feel of really being on a, on a movie set, you know, or a TV set. Like when you think of America and you think of those like, building facades and, yeah. and the whole town, but it looked so cool. Like Gary, John Gary Steele, again, has outdone it's himself. Amazing. And, um, yeah, that was cool. And so you guys also, Sophie and Richard, you guys get to stay in the past for a little bit. We get to see a little bit more of the, uh, of, of the period piece, uh, late 60s, early 70s. How was it being super groovy with each other and uh, getting to see the romance? They don't get build? on at all. <laughs> yeah. no. We have to keep them apart on set. <laughs> Well, true. You guys are the big romance this year. You know, obviously, this is the first season where we have Jamie and, and Claire get to be together, but you guys, we get to really see your romance film. Yeah. Yay. Finally. <laughs> how, is it, how is it being able to have a season where we get to flesh out who you guys are as people and then being able to see the romance bloom between the two of you? Yeah, you know, it's been really nice because obviously it's been quite a slow burn for us in that you just see sort of snippets of Bri and Roger and their relationship. Um, but this season, they're sort of dealing with a whole new, whole new sort of level of... A whole new world. You know, things, a whole new world. A brave yes. new world. <laughs> a brave, brave new world, a whole new world. <laughs> I just, uh, yeah, it, it, was, it was incredible, I think, for us to see um, Sophie and Richard really take the reins and blossom and be able to have such responsibility with new material and mm -hmm. and they did an outstanding job so that was really cool Thank yeah well done guys and it, meant, it basically meant that we got to go and, some days off yeah we got to go and, and <laughs> put our feet up Which put out like, to pasture a <laughs> little bit of a break is a good thing um tell me a little bit about just thematically for the first three seasons we've seen jamie and claire obviously be separated and big moments where you get to be together this is the first year we really get to see you guys build your life together what's it like being able to maybe not have so much of the fraught separation but be able to see a couple mature together and be able to play that as a different beat amongst between the two of you lots of arguments about whether he took the trash out or not <laughs> um he kept leaving the toilet seat up uh Didn't leave the that's the privy hole right <laughs> you say mature i'm not sure we're that mature but uh no, I, I think it was it was really nice for us to be able to explore this other side of their um, relationship, and um, there's something beautiful about when when they're relaxed around each other, and you know, it's not that they don't have disagreements or whatever, but there's just no cliffhangers anymore. Right. I think in in terms of are they going to stay together or not, um, you know, a lot of it is outside. Uh, influences that might, you know, cause problems. Right. But between them, it, they're really solid this season, and that was really lovely to play. All right, so we're going to play a little game because Ooh, yes. we are at Comic-Con, and so we have a 20-sided dice, and on each one of those numbers is going to be a question that's going to come up when you roll it. So oh, okay. who wants to roll, roll the Richard, dice? Richard, you go first. In, in the thing. Oh, the, the anticipation, I can feel it's palpable. Just wanna... 
I've got this table at home, by the way. This Number? It's a six. Six. It's oh. A six. Right. All right. What's the weirdest object someone has asked you to autograph, not counting body parts? Oh. 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 I got asked to autograph a little Tupperware. <laughs> a thing of Tupperware carrying two little cakes on the plane the other day, <laughs> did really? and I did. <laughs> did you get the cake afterwards? No, I gave them the cakes. You no. gave them well, the cakes? See, one of the stewardesses gave me cakes, but there were so many, and it was 6 a.m., so I kind of gave the rest of the stewards the rest of the cakes, and then Aww. she asked me to autograph a piece of Tupperware. I want to fly on your flight from now on. That's <laughs> yeah, right? cake. Anyone else? I was asked to autograph an anatomically correct Roger. Oh my God. A little Roger doll. Ooh. A little Roger. A little Roger like with a, a little, little Todger. Doll. <laughs> yeah. Where did you sign well, it? Is it anatomically correct? I mean, you know, it was, wasn't necessarily in proportion, but he had a little it, willy. It was good. That's an awkward moment. <laughs> and I'm not saying that that is representative. A little willy too. I'm Don't saying is, oh, I've, I've got a little willy in the show, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, who's next? Let's roll it. All right, All right go on then, Sophie. All right. Don't get a six. <laughs> oh. oh. I like it. Legs oh, 11. Legs 11. 11. 11? All right. In board games, David Barry, love are that. you a go with the flow player or a I will flip this board player? Oh, flip the board. For sure. Flip the board. I have to win. Yeah. And I'll <laughs> cheat if it needs to happen. All of you? Oh, my God. Oh, don't yeah. play a we're game. Very competitive. I'm yeah, it's actually monopoly. all of us. Yeah. yeah all of us. It's, yeah. it's ugly monopoly if we get the four of you together, right? Yeah. Like, people not talking afterwards. Which, which piece of the monopoly board are you? Um, I'm always the old boot. <laughs> <laughs> How true. How true. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> All right, next roll. Uh, all right. Let me go. Sorry to spat on you. 16. Ooh, 16. This is great. I like this game. Yes. You are in a huge Game of Thrones battle. What's your weapon of choice? Ooh. I don't know. Ooh, Game of Thrones battle. Uh, uh, since I know so much about Game of Thrones, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm going to say dragons are my weapon of choice. Oh, oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, you know nothing. Well, I'll you know. take a dire wolf in that case. There you yes. go. Well, well chosen. I don't know what else there is. Um, just dragons also, yes. Game, there you go. Game of Thrones. I would take the entire Stark family with me. They're all yeah. dead. They're all they Stark. all die in season one. They're all dead, Sam. <laughs> not in the prequel, they're not. Oh. <laughs> and if they want to give me a job, I'd love to. Oh. we got one minute 23 seconds. <laughs> right. Here we go. Oh, it's a nine. A nine or is it a six? A nine. It's a nine. nine a line. Oh. You're stuck on a desert island. Yes. What inanimate object do you hope becomes your best friend, and what do you name it? Well, <laughs> I believe in season three, you were stuck on a desert island, <laughs> yeah. and a coconut becomes your best friend. <laughs> I did talk to a coconut. So thank you, writers, for that one. <laughs> yes. My proudest day of work ever. Yes, <laughs> um, a, li a little anatomically correct Roger. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting more awkward. So many questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. We great. can throw in one more. Give one me a more. roll. Someone give us a okay. one more roll. Go on, go on, Balf. Number 19. This oh, is. One, six, Where do you stand on capes? Cool accessory or an unnecessary tripping hazard? Oh, cool. Yeah, I mean, definitely a walking. Unnecessary tripping hazard. Yeah, I think they're very cool. <laughs> Actually, quite hard to walk. Potentially well, fatal. Well, Have you seen Incredibles? Yeah. Like, try yeah. and run with a cape. Oh, is very no hard. capes ever. You strangle you a bit. <laughs> Trying to get on a horse wearing a cape, also very hard. Not well, yet. that's true. You do wear a lot of capes. I, I wore a lot of capes. Yeah. You she are knows. a superhero. She speaks of what she knows. <laughs> Claire is a superhero. Well, thank you for playing our nerd role, Carl. Yay. Thanks. Love Guys, it. we know the show's coming back 29 days. Can we hold out? Until then, make sure you go see their panel later on today. Thank you so much for your Thank time. You for it's always you. a pleasure, guys. Thank make you. Make sure you all see you around the panel. Thank you. Coming up next. Thanks, everybody.